way that I could see them potentially looking Prepare to address this as well is that you've got Ohio playing the Weaver, right? They do have a decent amount of catch, but if you're committing a lot of catch to be able to take out a position four, then it might make his life, uh, sorry, it might make your life on Enigma Galaxy a little bit more difficult. So if he wants to itemize into something like a Maelstrom and then the Agadim Shard, you can still deal a lot of damage to all this those Meepo clubs. This is freaking embarrassment. I think they just caught Vision of the Weaver there, thanks to the Observer Warden and Die, so... Should have an early awareness of this sentry place. They probably don't want to deal with it straight away. Otherwise, I might reveal of the uh, at least early movement from Nigma Galaxy. I see that. Eurocam's kind of getting set up to do so. There you go. The ping's starting to come out. But oh, again, what a game. I mean, for this game, we got a Meepo coming through from Alacrity. How are we feeling about this? Any? Uh, what are your predictions heading into this game? Do you feel like uh, Spawn 496 can go up against Alacrity staple in the Meepo? Or do Nigma Galaxy C have what it takes to, to win game one? Oh, it's a rough one. I mean, uh, until that Meepo was picked, I was pretty heavily in the 496 camp. But uh, that certainly throws a wrench into things. Like you mentioned, they needed something that was able to punish the, the single target focus that they have quite uh, at the moment on 496 and Meepo is definitely a good hero to be able to do that but you've also got the case that your poof isn't going to be quite as effective as well just with all of the lockdown that they've got as long as you just catch out one and continuously focus that one hero you have a good amount of lockdown potential there hell even just with the silence on the Queen of Pain as well with the Aghanim Shard. How is this lane going to go here for Alacrity versus the Quap? Because being a ranged melee matchup, it can always be a little bit rough, and Queen of Pain is you know, one of the best heroes, at least being able to dominate a lane uh, like this one. So do you feel like Alacrity might struggle a little bit? Could this be a weakness for the Meepo that they can penalize? Uh, potentially. I mean, the thing is, if you're having a rough time in the lane with a Meepo, you always have the luxury with that proof to be able to go back to the jungle and be able to, you know, catch up in farm in that way. And that's how you uh, emerge on the map with just so much more levels, kind of like a TA does. But they've done a good job in making sure that that camp is blocked up. So that's not going to be the case for Alacrity. But if he's... Uh... Actually, no, they went, they went and dewatered it. So good preemptive movement coming through there by uh, Nigma Galaxy to make sure Alacrity does have that way to ensure he's getting his farm when he's bullied out of the lane a little bit. They did block up the hard camp, though, around the triangle. So Radiant, they've come into this with a game plan of looking to really shut down no, Alacrity's no, Meepo. No. And it does kind of feel like, though, Nigma Galaxy maybe don't have the best supports to get as many stacks up at one time. Like it's nothing like a, a Grim or a Coddle that uh, can you know, chuck an ability out from far and, and, and stack camps uh, multiple times. Mm. It is a little bit different. Just want to see how In Your Dream is going to itemize as well. You know, he's going into the double brace. So position one conquer, not the first thing that you see all the time. Speaking up on the top side with the Carlson, who's making a little bit of a move here onto red, but Good job of making sure a lot of the pressure is taken off of his contract. Making it the it. easiest possible lane That's that it. he can. Lackney just trying to get his own stacks up. Ohio a little bit slow with the rotation through, so going to deny... Uh, sorry, not going to secure that water rune. Unfortunately, it was the uh, Vool Assassin that had hit him beforehand, so he got a lot less uh, health back than he would have liked from that water rune. <laughs> We've always been a really big fan of uh, Mizzou and Mizzou. Oh, yeah, Polisson. Oh, no. pretty low here. No. Looks like Red with one more right click from the Grim Show. We'll have our first kill of Division 2, the Winter Tour. Spawn, nine, spawn 496 to pick that up. And you love to see it. I mean, that's the, the sort of play that you want to be able to start things off. Again, like 496, for a long time, you know, they were in Division 1 of the first ever season of this new and improved DPC. But ever since then, it, it just felt like they've kind of been dropping off little by little. They've had players individually go on to have a good performing role in other teams, such as Hustler, now on OB Neon. But unfortunately for them, just as a team, their results haven't really matched up. So to be able to grab that first blood gives a, a nice little just to, to know that you're not the one to give up the first death in uh, in this new season. How do we feel like Mizu's able to shine here with the Earthshaker? Because this has been a play that we've been such a fan of when we saw him you know, come into this position three role. And I don't believe we've seen him on the Earthshaker. Like, I know it's been a, a hero that was only played as a three a little bit more at TI. Um, so we haven't 
had as many opportunities to Mizu maybe pull it out, but do you feel this could be any of the heroes that we uh, love to see him on? Potentially. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's quite as active as the heroes that Mizu typically does like to play, you know? Like, a lot of the time he does make a lot of things happen, but it's with... So, you know, the, the team fight ability is always there. And then he's able to just go back, you know, maybe farm a couple of camps, but then immediately go back in and team fight. Urshake is very different. You know, you've got this huge cooldown ultimate that you're basing your entire game plan around. You're not quite as easily able to farm safely on the map as well. Oftentimes they put Mizu in harm's way just because he's playing a hero like, you know, the Darkseer or the Brewmaster, and they're able to get to safety just through their innate toolkit. But Urshaker doesn't have that luxury. Does seem like a lane though where you know, both cores are getting a decent amount out of it. Ghost he's been solo for quite some time. Surprised that actually Ohio is level three, because he's been kind of you know scurrying around trying to get information down to where Alacrity's farming. And again, you're just seeing the uh, the awareness. So he's getting gone on a little bit and that minus armor starting to stack up. He's gone into the negatives now, so Ohio to deal a decent amount of damage. Yeah, the reason he got up to level three is because he uh, went and put that sentry ward up next to the small camp. So there was an observer ward there. So he got all that solo experience for himself. Mid lane, Alacrity. Yeah, they dropped the ultimate, Alacrity. He might just tick out. Well, let's see if the actual regent's oh, enough. He goes for the giant. <laughs> so close. Only one point in dagger, honestly. Maybe I put the extra point there. Might have been a, enough to, to tick him out after he tried the deny, but ah, you kill off the Meepo, unfortunately, you, you don't get claimed the, the kill for it, though, for the Queen of Pain. And bottom lane, they're on top of Ghost 2. Pyro's going to start to swing on over. Maybe a, a bit of a deterrent here is Think with Galaxy. Happy with trading up the resources early from Ghost, but he's definitely a hero that is pretty survivable with 33 points and, and a Vampiric Spirit, so we'll have a lot of regen. I'm liking the fact that Zillow and, you know, obviously the, the couple of points in the Shadow Strike is nice if you're able to get the kill onto Alacrity, but, you know, clearly he's just wanting to emphasize the uh, the Scream of Pain as much as possible. He's going to be looking to get really active throughout the map, just constantly shove these waves in, and even just like he did, steal away some of these camps from the Meepo. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, maybe going for more points in Scream, you could smoke up early, or... Because we've already seen the Grimshow try and scout out if there's any stacks as Ghost. We'll be okay. Radiant yeah, like the Grimshark should have been hunting through the jungle, keeping tabs on any stacks there. So maybe this will be an easier time for Sylan just to uh, swing on over and then potentially take them. Step lively now. Good amount of damage being put into the mid T1 tower as well, about a quarter of the HP. So happy to be able to grab that when you're pushing line up at this stage isn't quite where it needs to be. Obviously, Red is getting close to that level six and it's not going to be around the, uh, the first Siege Creep timing, but that'd be a pretty damn good game if you had. Kill Red. And the Dream is, they do have an Observe Ward at least from Radiant, so much pressure on Alacrity possible. And the Dream's Force is more of a defensive boat, just get that run buff popping. And that with the rotation for Polis on his well, they'll turn it back around to the Queen of Pain, blink on cooldown. And that'll cost him his life as Alacrity. Four points in, the proof is plenty of burst. Need is the, the second Meepo to be able to get all of that damage out in pretty quick succession. But oh, 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 as well. Okay. Yeah, that's what happens. You make such a big rotation to be able to counter the through, but Ghost is going to be going down the first time. He has the reincarnation, but you always hate to get pop this early on just because it's down. Do you, punish you quite heavily. Do you think about now sending maybe in your dream down bottom? and just try and put pressure on the tower or maybe all put pressure on ghosts it looks like this catapult wave you're gonna lose it but knowing reincarnations on cooldown feels like a big window to really limit the farm that ghost can get yeah for me if you were able to rotate quickly enough it's like the way he's trying to yeah. yeah. Fenton with Brace, not level up for the moment, so Mizzy will turn and drop a huge Echo Slam. The damage stacking up on the creeps, and now Yorkham, thanks to the haste, gets there in the nick of time. A beautiful rotation should net themselves two kill thanks to a huge ultimate I from the Earthshaker. Oh. I mean, Job one oh. is juking Bobby. through the tree line, there's no Step way. <laughs> okay. Oh, you get the kill on Ghost, you take it. But. 
a little bit of silver linings. Go bon bon. Imagine if that tiebringer just clipped him. <laughs> that would have been such an anti-climax. Step live. Right, rotation up top here from Alacri. They're just looking to get really aggressive here. I like the fact that Mizu is, you know, not just wanting to sit back and farm. He's wanting to connect constantly together with this Meepo. Make sure because he is the win condition, right, for the team. So you can't just sit back and be passive. All of these rotations need to be winners from Alacri. And so far, outside of one, they have been. Nice little stacks here starting to build up. What do we feel like Radiant can do to really prevent this win condition coming online? Is it maybe the Dragonite converting a lot of early towers, a solid blink timing? Does Scylla need to be the, the huge tempo controllers? We see a lot of from the position twos. Like, what are the key points here from uh, Spawn 4, 9, 6? I'd say, honestly, all of the above. The big thing that they need to be playing around next is this... Uh, 10 minute catapult wave because dragon form is 40 Radiance seconds off cooldown it'll hit basically right when the siege creep hits that mid lane the important part is taking away this jungle from nigma galaxy c because they've got a couple of heroes that are really good at taking it both the meepo and the conquer so if you're going to be able to take away a lot of those easy access points a lot of those easy places where you can TP to try and save if you invade the jungle, then it's going to go a long way towards securing a win. But I think Nigma Galaxy realizing that you know, they lost the top tower, it's reaching that sort of timing where they could look to make these rotations through. They're taking all the stacks already. So Black B took the ones inside their own jungle. He's taking the ancient stack now, so at least they'll secure that farm and not have it stolen away from them. I think for Dyer, we might see a little bit of difficulty with how they can start fights pre mis to blink. It's going to be very reliant on Radiant overcommitting into like an X or Fissure uh, or even Meepo somehow getting in range for the ensnare. But in, you know, until you've got hooks, of course, but if that's on cooldown and uh, you're putting a lot of dependency anyway on a support that have perfect positioning as Izu. Run up that high guy, my friend. He's going to do just that. But just to secure the extra damage, Mizu bursts it down. Benito Dream's looking to get involved as well. Another defensive though. Is it going to be enough to keep Polison alive? So it looks like it'll be a two-for-one trade. Yokam looking to get involved as well. They'll make it work for it once again. Tide bring off the creep. He'll go for it and he'll get it. Beautifully done in your dream. Like we said, a two-for-one though, but the big kills aren't there on the Meepo, Alacrity is continuing to free from. He is, and this Elder Dragon form wasn't used at all to take this mid tower. That's the other downside. So yes, you get rid of Mizu, that's great, but he's able to just respawn quite quickly and go straight on back to farming, although it's uh, be a little bit more troublesome if he does get dived. I think he feels quite safe playing next to that tier two tower at the moment, but yeah. They've uh, missed that timing around that Siege Creep wave. And, you know, like you mentioned before, Alacrity was able to take another set of Ancients. I believe it was stacked once as well. So his farm is just going to continue to run. Apollo is actually going to hook shot in. It's good to back up damage thanks to the Mortimer Kisses. They feel content with getting rid of the Reincarnation. Now cooled out for 200 seconds. There was a smoke, though. Maybe Paulson. Did he place any Observer Wards for that? No, so. I guess reincarnation for it. Maybe they'll look to smoke shortly once Mizu gets blinked, but that should still take some time. And by then, I think reincarnation will be back up. All right, so a bit of a look at what might next be on the agenda. We've got a couple of armlets picked up. One on uh, 496's side and one for In Your Dream. He's also got the double damage available. So he's dealing a good amount of damage right now. Got the level 10 as well, so that plus 30 damage coming from talent. If they wanted to make any kind of rotations, they absolutely could. Maybe just wanting to wait for Alacrity to pick up that Blink Dagger, because him and Mizu, they're getting closer to it. And yeah, just have a look at how they are prioritizing Mizu's farm. Like I mentioned before, they've got good heroes to be able to take jungle camps, but the Earthshaker is not one of them just yet, not quite as efficient. So just putting him in the safest spot on the map in that uh, Radiant Dead Lane, giving him a lot of farm towards that blink dagger he has to make sure he doesn't overstay his welcome though radiance middle so how worried would you be right now that spawn 496 aren't really contesting alacrity's farm like are they going to match maybe once the meepo tails off as the game goes later and later uh, I feel like, I mean, the Meepo does tail off, sure, but I feel like you don't have an insane scaling lineup either, right? It's not this dual farming core. A Queen of Pain, even though Zillone's had a pretty good early game, kind of with the way that Quop is now, if you're not having a good early game, you've done something wrong, right? 
Yeah. Like you've got so much more sustain for the laning stage. And while it's good that a lot of your stuff does pierce through to BKB, you always got that blink for the inbuilt uh, movement. It just doesn't feel like they're getting enough out of the map just yet. And the only reason that they're able to, you know, sit back and farm like this is because, again, there's that safety net of the tier one. If you were looking to dive inside the triangle, you have a lot of abilities that are really good in such close quarters. You know, the Mortimer's Kisses, the Echo Slam, uh, the Boat. You don't want to be walking up into darkness. And by the Dire team oh, having their tower there, it's so rough. It's coming down, looking for the blink reel. A little bit too far out here, but uh, it definitely feels go time for Dire. Like, Blink just picked up on Alacrity and Mizu. Where do we want to aim for next? Is this maybe a, a smoke behind a hero pushing tier one mid that they can potentially bait? Do you think about maybe getting some wards down bottom and, and targeting your, your forces there? Well, it looks like they are going to smoke up and go for a bit of a rotation, trying to maybe find Ghost on his Wraith King. He's actually looking to farm on the Dire side of the map. They probably aren't going to be looking there. They'll see the camps that have been uh, farmed so far. Maybe they'll guess up top, but they'll also just look to wait, try and bait this out a little bit here because it is approaching that 15 minute mark as well. Uh -oh. Should have seen, yeah, yeah, they immediately drew. They saw the direction that that rocket flare came from. So immediately there was the drawing on the map, just saying, look, they're smoked here and they should be able to set up to try and defend this, but they don't have the strongest time to be able to do this. You know, they know if they're going for a smoke, it's because they've hit some kind of item timing. So I like the fact that 496 aren't really looking to contest this all that much. They might try and make a bit of a play towards the bot side. They'll be able to dragon form. And the blink dagger is up as well on red, but being a little bit too passive for mine. It definitely feels like Radiant's way to initiate fights and, and take team fights in general is, is a bit of a concern. Like, Dyer have an overwhelming amount of stuns and big team fight ultimates as well, where it might be really difficult for Spawn 496 to contest that once we head to the to the mid game because nick mcgallic here they're ready to rock and roll they've hit their items and you see how they're posturing polison and the he's just gonna pop the smoke he's got some heroes in the back as well beautiful coax the place for the ball dropping down straight on the heads of two heroes and now over the top echo slam on four overwhelming amounts of damage and the rest of enigma galaxy they're looking for the cleanup crew alacrity prioritizing the queen of pain making sure there's no escape and with the back line as well snap is just going to put his body on the line to prevent any disengage but the rest of enigma galaxy a little bit slow to connect so I mean, what was looking like a disastrous start to the fight, it's somehow a three for two trade. Radiant's middle tower is it's under a three for two tower. trade, but again, there was the Elder Dragon form used, right? So they're still going to be lacking that form of tower push, ghost TP back, so it's not like you... lively now. Your Admiral is on board. ...for that Radiant, so obviously that's going to be quite nice against the Meepo, just to take away some of that burst potential. Um, but, I mean, it feels a little odd that they were allowed to do that, right? Because you know that they in the area previously you saw the clockwork uh, rocket flare come from that area you can probably assume that that's going to be warded up there but they didn't go for the initial d ward finally now they do get it but uh yeah an absolute disaster setting up for another great team fight ultimate coming from mizu but the downside is it's going to be another 100 seconds until he's able to do it again yeah i mean there's kind of the team fighting aspect yeah, we were just speaking about though like how are you going to be able to contest to it do i have a lot of ways to force radiant to clump together like you're not just relying on mizu to start fights and that's like the most ideal game for an earth shaker where you're not forced to be the initiator and the counter initiator and i was just talking about before like why they didn't really want to try and invade and take away some of Alacrity's farm because it's scary to be fighting around choke points. We saw what just happened in that narrow little choke point, right? You just clump together, you get a great cogs off, and it just sets up for a fantastic Echo Slam coming through. All things are, are clicking to the moment, though, for oh Nick Galaxy. Still got this T1 tower up, and you're against the Dragonite, you're against the Wraith King. They're playing to the late game, it looks like, like you were saying, goes building for the Radiance, but this Dyer, could give a huge on. window, though, for Nick Galaxy to take an early Roshan. Dyer's I mean, a Wraith King is definitely is not at a stage where he's able to combat that, and if you get an early Ages, your outer towers just might to really crumble. 
And maybe they want to take the T1 tower on the top side beforehand, just because, you know, you've got some good abilities to impact the team fights. If the supports, for example, do need to buy back. Drink a fade, just swarm if one of those heroes gets picked off nice and early. Polison, it's got to be on point. Oh, oh. <laughs> Dylan is, is making them work for it. You see, we haven't really felt too much of the impacts early for the quad. One, two, and two. Farming up relatively well. Nothing that can compete with the, the Meepo's farming speed, but it's going to go for a build that Alacrity actually kind of likes to go here with the, the Queen of Pain. You know, the, the early Sunjin Kaya. Uh, BKB will you know, potentially see like the Aghanim shard at a decent rate. It's not this Orchid Queen of Pain that you are really relying on snowballing kills. I feel like the Sanjin Kai is just going to be overall quite useful, right? Like, they, they, it seems like they're avoiding going BKBs for the most part. Um, like, a good item BKB, it seems like, for most of them. But for going into the Aghanim Shard next kind of combats that a little bit, right? You've got that somewhat layer of save. If a Meepo is going in on top of you, you've also got a ton of healing that's going to be able to get out onto whichever target Alacri tries to focus on. Good old Conker. Love to see it. Just keep it back, clear the wave, keep pushing the tower. It's going to keep the rack going though. And he knows that a Conker's not able to join this. So the question for him is, well, who's going to punish me? It's not a Conker. So how are they looking to start a team fight outside of that? Now he goes to see. They're just going to look to trade. I would say that 496 are probably going to be happy with this though. If they are able to get the tower, that is. Dyer's top tower. I know they're smart. <laughs> Top they caught out. Ghost under the T2 tower. That will turn the reincarnation. Still without the radiance complete. It's a, a big power spike that they're lacking at the moment here for the Raid King. Still, it's going to try and push it back, but still the perfect fissure placement. Make sure there's no retreat for the Raid King and Dragonite as well. Will lose his life as Nigma Galaxy once again surround the heroes. Yeah, I mean. I like the fact that they were going for that, right? Because, you know, you have to trade if the enemy team's got your tier 2 10 and this one is higher value because we still haven't had the first Roche outside of now that they're looking to go for. So it would have opened up a big opportunity for them to take it. In the case, though, is that a yeah, echo slam use just to be able to get the uh, sub kill? I don't hate it. You know, it gives away the potential to maybe snipe away the ages. I don't know. Maybe Mizu's just getting a little bit greedy and uh, some of that. That carry mentality coming back into his mind. Yeah, I, I hate as well. I mean, I was just going to highlight that Mizu hasn't really progressed too much with his farm after the blink, but you know, a kill like that is going to help out. And I just got about 2k gold in the bank. Going for a pretty early BKB here. Do you like this on, on Mizu? Is this just more like a, a core Earthshaker thing instead of going like an Aghanim shard for uh, some utility? I think he just wants to make sure he's not completely if the Queen of Pain, for example, is able to get back onto it. So you don't want to be able to just pop that and then kind of force the Queen of Pain to choose another target. And by doing that, you've maybe given the rest of your team time to be able to create some space for themselves so they're not getting burst down. Ghost has finally found this Radiance, but it is 21 minutes in. Radiance top and you've given a big opportunity for Nick Galaxy as well down bottom. On top of the Queen of Pain, Alacrity and Mizu. There's the one-two punch they can provide across the map that makes it so difficult for the Quop to be this mobile threat that we see so often. And now as soon as they get that pick off, Nick Galaxy, the awareness that this is a big window where we can just look to occupy Radiance territory and really minimize how much farm they can get. Yeah, they were wanting to play a little bit more passively, just maybe waiting for those big cooldown ultimates to become available. That's why they only really took the fights around their own objectives. But now that the Echo Slam's only about 30 seconds away, they take away the outpost and they're looking to just get the siege going with the Meepo. They're also setting up for Ghost. They're starting to follow him. But like he doesn't have a game though. Yeah, he's got, like, still, he's farming okay. But <laughs> you got like three heroes consistently chasing across the map. And I'll tell you what, the contrast between Meepo and how safely he's been farming and the Wraith King is just completely night and day. Like Radiant have put almost no pressure on Alacrity where it's been the opposite for Wraith King's game. And the thing is with the Wraith King as well, just because of how 
relatively mobile they are with their heroes and the, the good catch that they've got on Enigma Galaxy, all it really takes is Polison on his clockwork to move up towards the top side. And I think that's three times now that Ghost has just had to completely abandon the top side of the map, even though that's probably the safest place he could be right now. Jokem, this would be a free kill if they're able to pick it up, but preemptive Fisher coming out there from Mizu just to prevent some of that aggression. I mean, we've seen DK blink for quite some time now, and I, I didn't even know he had to blink. Like, yeah, I, I, I have not seen Red make a play. This is an issue. Like, we were bringing up that Born Four Nine Six are going to need to get really good conversion with the blinks and take early Radiant's towers to tower. really diminish some of the early farm and just the snowballing that Nick Galaxy C will tower. get. Radiant's but this is what tower. happens with a Meepo lineup. You, you come out ahead, you're a little bit greedy early on. You get first ages. And now your map control is just, it's chokehold. It, it's firm now. Played as well. So any target that gets found is immediately picked off. They want to make sure that they're making their plays like ghost. before these BKBs come up. And he's close to the tower, but Dyrus swing on over. Mizu sets up once again. The blade down and off damage to bring down the first time. Now Ray, they need to react. But first off, getting him out of harm's way. So it's nice though. reinforcements, but you've got to be cautious. Alacrity, that's a peculiar angle into the fight. From the middle lane, he goes on top of the T3 tower. They'll get rid of the Queen of Pain. You've got to be cautious about the buyback for Mizu again. Drop the Echo onto three. The damage is so much for Spawn 586 to deal with. They've killed off the first life, but they've got to be cautious about how deep you go. You're really inside Radiance territory. You don't want to throw this lead you have. The ultimate's starting to dwindle. Alacrity, very powerful nonetheless, though. He's going to continue to push Radiant back further and further inside the base. And no one on Nygma Galaxy has died. It's dying. The A just only had about a minute left on it. A little odd that they didn't opt to try and stay and take that out just because you'd used all of your big ultimates already to try and take them out. So the AoE damage was gone. The Grimstroke wasn't going to be alive for another 20 or so seconds, but they're just going to take the safer route, continue to go back. Again, you've got the lead, you've got the map control. So just try and extend your farm a little bit further. This is the DPC, not the one where you need to be taking any kind of drastic risk. Now, though, that Mizu's been able to land that great teamfight ultimate. It's really what he's become more and more known for throughout the Southeast Asian region as this offlane presence. Yeah, it's never too fun recently when you're playing into, uh, into Mizu's position three. The amount of times we've seen this man turn a game completely around. Like, we just have to highlight this again, though, right? Like, you picked a Dragon Knight with a Raid King third pick in the draft, I believe. And, uh, oh, have we got a pick off here? Maybe. On kind of higher. Fishing. But, like, it's, it's 26 minutes, let's say. You're still not level 12 on red. You haven't made any plays happen with that blink dagger, and mid and bottom tier 1 towers are still alive. Like, that is not where you want to be right now. At least now he's got level 12, but... So far I'm trying to get anything that came out of the map. The four stuff goes in. One. Still, it's. You see it on the list, though, and they have to force in. Like, uh, using that item uh, aggressively feels so awkward when you really need that replacement out of Cogs or out of, like, Fissure for the uh, Kisses setup. I mean, how close to BKBs are we? Uh, that really feels like maybe that's the. The one big fight we're waiting here for spawn 496. Like, Ghost needs that, Quat needs that. They feel strong though. Look at how they're posturing. I mean, Ghost is in the middle of the map. It's just a map rate Polison. So, two kickoffs. Signs of life here from Radiant. Drag it back though. So, Ghost is still in no man's land at the moment. Playing around with the reincarnation possibility. Keeping Nigma Galaxy on their toes. Super close to their BKBs though, right? They're basically like one component on all of the DK, Quop, and Wraith King. So, so, it feels a little bit difficult for mine for them to try and come back into this still. <laughs> Look at that. A BKB on the position 5 clockwork. He's so far. How, how is he so far? I, I, he's 71. Seven. How's he got 71 last hits actually? He did max uh, out Flare first, flare. yeah. And you, probably the skeletons as well. Sure. I have seen him get a couple of nice little bounties from the from the shovel. He's got Philosopher's Stone too. 
They ah. smoked under the Observer Ward right then, in the mid lane. So let's see how 496 are going to look to try and respond to this. The ooh, Elder Dragon Form's running out. He's using it to try and farm, get close to that DKB. It's kind of just an abating position right now. See if uh, he can dangle one of the heroes from Nick McGillie's shit to, to heavily commit. Jackpot! I was actually talking with a few people about this in recent times with the, you know, you mentioned the clockwork going the Rocket Flare build first. I don't hate it. You know, I feel like it just, it gives you a lot more net worth. It means that you can push out far, uh, waves that are a little bit more unsafe to farm. And the damage that it racks up over the course of a, a team fight is pretty damn significant. You know, 12 second uh, cooldown with the talent and 200 damage over an AoE, like a thousand damage in a team fight is pretty damn significant. Ghost. It's actually just gonna man up right now. Going straight to the triangle. And it's a little pop an early BKB. They're playing very smooth at the moment, making sure they don't get all cooped up, but guys, exactly, that's early reincarnation. Have to use the defensive BKB. Ghost trying to reset the fight, but now with the BKBs expiring, Sport 496 gonna have to look to get out of the area. This music can hold them back. Dropping the Echo Slam once again. A lot should have plenty of damage to follow up and already. How can they turn this back around? Meepo, about half health still to play with, but the damage is starting to lack without Ghost nearby. So they can turn. Sylvan's actually going to jump in, dropping the Sonic Wave. This is a window that they weren't expecting. As Nick Miguel XCC heavily commit at the top side of the map. They'll lose two at the moment. Anything more they can get out of it, though. Yeah, Mizu will be found in the tree line red. He's lacking the stun, though. Unfortunately, only three points drag and tail. It doesn't have the, uh, the lowest duration with that cooldown. It's uh, another good play coming through from the Queen of Pain there, Zillern. Even making sure that he's jumping behind so that Sonic Wave pushes him a little bit further away from the rest of the team. So you might not get that, uh, that cookie save or you know, things of that nature. So good play. It felt like something that was absolutely necessary to happen, though, because, uh, again, Red, he's had to pop the Elder Dragon form for that, and he wasn't able to get any objectives. So you didn't lose your base. Great. But now you need to actually do something with it. It's going to get them a lot closer towards those BKBs. You would have to think that after they secure some of these neutral items and wait for their cooldowns to become available Dyer's again, top that's top when 496 is going to make their real move. Because if they don't, this game feels like it's in the arms of the galaxy. It does feel like, though, like we've seen Spawn... 496 get a couple of pickoffs these past couple of fights that they've shown they, they, they've shown some prowess to, to maybe get a kill with with the, the bkb starting to be picked up and if they go for like a 2-1 trade next fight and maybe only lose grimstroke or, or dk even they could definitely take roche and then all of a sudden you might delay this game by an extra five six minutes and then maybe that could be an extra way for you to go later and later to to really have ghost starting to get more items but another smoke that was i believe under vision oh, they're daytime. coming over miguel xcc see the queen of pain once again reading a little bit split so he's just gonna find the angle just to the back right to grimstroke is a, a cheeky solo kill for him he's got the arc in in the arsenal so fishes back up Goes completely trapped into a higher. They're able to reposition him. Rushes oh. up and with Grimshark yep. down for 60, this should be pretty free. Grim down for 60, you've got the vision, so they're going to need to make sure that they uh, make a smoke play if they are going to try and contest this. But right now, as soon as Ghost reveals that he's just farming in the lake, you're not all that concerned about any kind of team. Fight. Queen of Pain, still has been taking really good fights, but you just can't do it solo. Yeah, so we. Is this a new Ag shot? Who this? Wait, what? The Meepo's Ag shot. Uh, yeah, the fling. It had like the... What is it, the, this? It has the Sven Stormhammer animation, or at least it did when I last tested it. Wait, wait. Have you seen it in action? You want to give maybe the viewers and me an explanation? Because I <laughs> did not just, know... Just, just read what it says, you know? I feel like that's the, the best way to do things in Dota. It's just like hurling a version of yourself at another version of yourself. Right. Very cool ability. Interesting. Is there no one else you'd be like, yeah, let's give the shot to them. Like, yeah, I mean... Come on, Jetpack. You, come on, I know Illusion. you like uh, the, the shards on supports. So you gotta try and make a case here. All right, bear with me. Uh, they bait out the fact that Mizu's Blink Dagger is on cooldown, and then you divided we stand, throw him into a team fight, and use that as your initiation. Wait, can you throw a teammate? The... 
Gatling U. Close is that? What the heck? <laughs> what is this shot? You have to do it on a target though. It's not just like on the ground. What's the range? So, oh, it's all right. Yeah. 900? Okay, that's honestly not too bad. 900 is pretty far. It's honestly mostly used for the save potential, right? Like one Meepo is getting low, so you throw him out of the team fight and then, you know, try and uh, use your move to get away from the Setting up top, Hex reveal. Oh my god, Meepo is damaged. So much for Ghost to deal with. Still doesn't have the arguments as well, so a BKB TP out, but Polison always trying to find the angle. The higher. The higher did really well there. The body blocks, making sure the hook shot wasn't able to get through. Might end up costing him his own life. <laughs> and it will. They're running straight to Cillian down bot though. The they're able to do. The Yokem under the ward. The rest of Radiant also coming over, but Yokem and Co have awareness of this. I have had a really good control of this game in regards to the vision. I mean, Rocket Flare, of course, is an exceptional way to scout out, but when you've always had this much map control, it can just make it that much easier to uh, have these aggressive wards. I honestly would really like to see Die hold a gem. Like, I, I feel like this is still an item that is completely undervalued, and you, like, you've had so much net worth, just continue to, them, to choke them out. True. I suppose the only downside to that is you don't really want to give that back to them. You know, when it's a 20k net worth lead, if you're able to put it on, let's say, a clockwork who's going to be using the rocket flare just to make sure he's scouting those high grounds, it it can feel a little bit sucky. The that essentially like a, a 2,000 net worth swing, right? Because you're yep. losing 900 in their game. Double damage. Ghost once again farming incredibly deep here across the map. I mean. He's got no choice. Like, yep. just look at the Dire Vision, right? It's Radiant completely story. cutting off Radiant any kind of avenues oh. to move forward, even getting the plate mail. So is this just a, a slow death here for Spawn 496? Or uh, what are we waiting for them to maybe look for their, their next smoke attempt and, and head outside the base and take a fight? Uh... Good question. I mean, for me, again, it's going to be on uh, Zillow as well as Shiaplo. Oh, Missy, don't do it. Echo dropped. He's got the DD damage, but the chain control is a little bit light. So, Cop's going to go for a BKB TP up. We'll be fortunate enough. So, Echo on cooldown. BKB on cooldown, though, which is pretty significant. Radiance boot force off. They've got Aegis for another 50 seconds. Radiance Trying to do some to work, and some damage on top of the tier 3 tower. Maybe force some rotations back. Still there, no echoes on cooldown, Radiant. So they can hold the base. Creep still has to keep tabs on these Aegis. The network continues to stack up for the Meepo, so it looks like he's happy. <laughs> sacrificing life and getting back out with ease on top of the real Meepo, which, where is he? Okay, he's down the lane. He made sure to send it way back. That was the one that they were x marking the entire time, just to make sure that if they had edges did pop, you're not just going to be, like, land to the side. Mizu, even preemptively, was walking well away from that engagement. Bounty! Uh, yeah, again, just taking away all the vision that they've got. They're going to need to be really unorthodox with some of their ward positioning here because if you just place it high ground, yes, it, it does provide you with that that feeling of goodness for a little bit, but oh, yeah. it's uh, not going to last. Long. Smoked up. Okay, I'm only one showing the lane at the moment. Ready? Have a really good ward around the area. So this is the ideal place to take an engagement. Enigma Galaxy Southeast Asia. I believe they saw the Wraith King smoked under the water. I didn't see any pings, but was underneath the uh, the Dire Observer. I think we I really just want to see Radiant. Like, that's what I'd want them to do. Like, take fights contest continuously around your own vision. Because now, like you just said, like, you get a little bit of a good feeling when you drop the ward on the high gun, but it's it's going to be dewarded in a minute. So you have to get usage out of it if you're going to play that much of an obvious Observer. Yeah, you got to protect the vision as much as possible. Oh. Mate, maybe it's just a case of, look, we just need to try and buy time just for that little bit extra. I mean, the uh, plate mail is going to be available on Wraith King's Courier again in 10 seconds. He's got enough gold to be able to buy the remaining components of it. Maybe he wants level 20 as well, but I mean, that actually could be pretty significant. The cleave against the Meepo might be the extra little bit they need to be able to take him down. Oh, 
not a fan of uh, Ohio just walking in here. You got to give all of that experience over to Ghost. Still falling really behind on the Agnums too. Could be such a key item because Dyer have been pretty you know, off the back of a lot of their bursts through the Echo. Say, so, yeah, oh, Mizu doesn't no. go for that Echo Slam, does he? Do they? Illusion! Mizu? Ooh, it's away just in time. This is He'll be able to BKB if he needs to, and he can also walk across the fissure. Let's remember that. I was just going to say, if Radiant got a, a spider leg, that's what I was looking for now, but unfortunately, uh, not as fortunate. Some of their neutral items. I mean, we, we've seen how Double those fissures can really put a dent in how they're looking to set up their formation in their team fights. You have All right. some items are starting to be picked up, aren't they, though? Yeah, AC complete. Cleave talent online. Sonic Wave, I guess, available. <laughs> and of course, Grip Stroke with the uh, the Ig Swell. It does a lot. Like, you need to make sure that this is on top of... I would honestly put it on the Quap. I, I would put it on Zillone and just get him to blink right on in. It's only a 5.3 second cooldown on the blink. You're going to have the BKB. You're going to have the extra armor coming through from the, um, the Assault Kiras. So you're not going to be in too much danger of dying. Plus the fact that you know that you're going to have the healing component coming through from that Grimstroke uh, Agadim Shard. We've got an Octarine core on Grim here. Oh, How does he farm the Octarine? That's all he's got. That's out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure. All so right. Look, Roche potential for respawning. It's an instant Roche. It's an instant Roche. Oh. Oh, Definitely see the direction is proved away. They have some recognition, but Roche is still going to get obliterated. All this minus armor. Oh, no, not again. Oh, what do we get? Refresher. Let's give that one over to Mizu. Let's see if Radiant stick around. They might surprise them. They got two really good observe wards around their triangle, but starting fights once again is very difficult. It's only single target initiation and straight away scout it out. I mean, the power of the rocket flares. Like if it does go that late, it's going to get even worse, right? Because uh, Clockwork's going to be level 20. Then you've got that rocket flare through sight, so you know if they've got vision on the hand. How's he got eyes? How is he so far? Looks a good hero, man. Oh boy. I, I, I really struggle to see how they take fights against Fissure, double cogs, double hook shot. There's just so much BKB piece in control and also just like, you could almost call the like ground placement abilities like effective BKB piece in control as well. Just you, you can't reposition, like you, you're stuck in a, in a proximity. Roaming around here on the bottom side of the map with his uh, invis rune, just trying to catch out anyone that might be trying to farm. But case just brings his clones here to make sure that you're constantly pushing out as well. It's the other bonus as well, right? You've got multiple ways now. Yeah, Setting up on Ghost. Ohio is still without the Agonims. He's got BKB already. Full stop as well. With Collison, great time for prioritization. Gonna look to top the backline, but Ghost has been able to pop the BKB, but still they're ripping apart the backline. Two supports go. BKB super defensive. It's just a hope to get out to safety. But look at the awareness. I mean, just jump the support. Get rid of the Grim. Get rid of the Weaver. And that's the best you can do. Mizzou, even pop the refresher for a double fissure. Radiant's Don't hate it. I mean, if it's what's going to finally edge you this game, despite the fact that it's been a 90 plus percent win probability for the past 20, you take it. Radiant's now level 25 as well on the Meepo. Just wanting to go all in on the survivability. They're, they're not liking in damage right now. You just saw that Jokan was able to pump out so much with that level 3 of the Mortis Kisses. I didn't kill anyone. 4,200 health on Conker, 3,700 on Meepo, not to mention he's got Ages. Both your position, sorry, both your supports have over 2200. And you, and you are, like, what's going on? They're so tanky. What is this, four strength heroes? Uh, yes. Four strength heroes. It's very, very cool, very balanced. I mean, going in for the initial part of the draft, we were thinking that it was going to be 496. That was hard to <laughs> kill, but... Uh -huh. 
if you let the uh, the net worth differential get so far in Enigma Galaxy's favor like they did, then it's always going to make things so much more difficult for yourselves. And, you know, the tier one tower is still standing. This should not be the case. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of the speaking about earlier that Spawn 496 had to put a lot of emphasis on converting these Elder Dragon forms to towers. You have to get into the jungle early and start to infiltrate. And we saw they had that game plan though, like at the very start of the game, they were looking to place as many sentry downs and observers and really position themselves to scout out the stacks. But after that, it. yeah, we just didn't see any conversion after that. <laughs> 42,000 net worth, 43 minutes in. I've always been a, an advocate of if it's past 20 minutes and the net worth is equal to the number of minutes played, it's probably going to go in favor of that team. Uh, 496. They're not wanting to tap out, obviously, realizing that every single win, even if it's only a 1% chance, hey, a chance to maybe try and wait for that overwhelming blink, but Nick Galaxy not wanting to give him the again. opportunity. Let's set up on Ghost. Force some reactions out early. Once again, they'll jump the back line. Straight on top of the green show. They've got the firebacks. Let's keep it away back in for the fight. But we're going to push Ghost further outside the base. Takes some time away. Now, Little East One has still got the BKB. But he doesn't have any extra assistance at the moment as Ghost is using this defensively to reposition himself. But the rest of Dyer, they've committed heavily here. They've lost to Shaker along with the clockwork. The lack of still has the ages in the arsenal with In Your Dream standing hand in hand as well. Buybacks coming to free, but Alacrity, let's see what he can do with the second round. He's going to jump on fourth, they'll push Grimstroke to the western side. But the Meepo is slowly, slowly falling, and finally, they'll bring down Alacrity. So 496, like you said, I mean, you're going to make him work for it. We might have a long game here, but every single game matters. They'll take it to the end. It's a lot of buybacks, though. Three buybacks on Weaver, Grimstroke, and the Wraith King. So even though he was able to be part of that kill towards the end onto the Meepo, doesn't actually do anything for his net worth. He's right where he was prior to that fight. So still opened up a little bit of a win condition for Nigma Galaxy, despite the fact that you were finally able to kill Alacrity. Was starting to come into, uh, come in handy a little bit there. The oh, no. away from the overwing blink. Oh, oh no. not the gobble up. Okay, I just <laughs> thought that was just going to do a lot more. It is against a DK. So it's just exciting, you know, the anticipation of an Agonims we haven't seen in some time. Will they get the tower? Still going for kills. Surely you just take this tower. Thank you. I tell you what, though, probability is not 0% anymore. Okay. So, Denog, I'm saying there's a chance. Saying there's a chance, all right. I believe you. Is it a five percent chance level. though? That's it's a, <laughs> that's a good I feel question. Like it's, a, it's a two. It's gone up from one to two. You'll take him. Uh, it's gonna a little bit better at least in regards to the odds. Meepo definitely slowly losing his timing, but when you're what nine k ahead at the enemy's position one, it definitely feels like you're. Timing goes a little bit later, considering you're not neck and neck in that were. And you've finally been able to get some of these neutral items. You know, they've been available for nine minutes and they just finally claim the last three. So, and they're not the greatest ones overall. The spell prism given over to the cop is nice. And it uh, looks like they're going to be taking the nit to gear on the Grimstroke. Don't hate it. He just needs to make sure that he's not the target of the hookshot. All of these different engagements. The overwhelming blink. There's a blink dagger as well. Yeah or Xiao Bon Bon, so he's going to make sure that he's just staying completely in safety and then looking to join in with that ink swell onto... I still want it to go onto Zilla, especially now that he's got the spell prism. It just provides him with so much extra layers of security. You know, you're going to have the AoE Shadow Strike. You're going to have a blink on less than a five second cooldown, plus the dispel coming through from the ink swell with the Ag Shard, plus the healing from that, plus all of the, uh, all, all the damage that you're able to output with the Scream of Pain. Like you're saying. So this could be, who knows, maybe you strand another team fight together. When Ohio, these Agonims could kind of catch them off guard. Maybe you overcommit on one hero, you're not caught out of position, and you're almost caught with your pants down, and you don't know how to reset. Well, it's Alacrity, so. Oh, no. Ow. Boys out. Just in time. 
I mean, the base is getting pushed and no one's defending it, so they Radiance kind of know all the Mizu. Fucking pretty damn bravely up into their base, considering he doesn't have buyback. Say hello to Double. my lesser friends. This one's even got a refresh shot. Any next items we see getting picked up for, for Dyer, surely? Alacrity's got a double Scotty. Very cool, very cool. It's all about the stats, man. This is a real Selling those dragon lances, not needed. But they gave him off the Vol Philosopher's Stone. Interesting. Surely there's an another item. Does he need more net worth? My guy is cruising up top. I mean, he was holding him for the longest time. Was he actually? Yeah. Six stats, baby. It's so important. What else would you take, Radiant honestly? Not much. Yeah, right in Radiant this right now. Maybe you'll take your cam. Rest it though, a little bit disconnected here from the snap fire, but he's goddamn tanky. He's got some survivability items too. Seconds without the snap fire. You learn up onto the high ground. He's just Boom, acting like he's a bit of an observer ward right now. Unfortunately, for 496, they're not going to be lucky enough to get that instant Roche respawn. They're actually going for a bit of a reverse wraparound here. Oh, hi, who's going to lead the charge? He's really vital to the lineup at the moment with the Agonins. Alacrity trying to prioritize him as well with the security. Furthers the positioning from Ohio, but now they're straight on top of Alacrity too. The AoE damage starting to rack up. With the help of the Ron Buff. It's Meepo alive. They're trying to target him with the e -blade. No, they're not. Meepo is gone, but a buyback looking to rejoin the fight as Mizu drops the slam. Jumping all over the top on the Rave King. That's up with the first flag. Alacrity back in the fray as well, but it looks like this time. Nick McGalax is out this day. Asia will clean up the team fight. Gonna catch up the stragglers as Ghost down to the north inside. Queen of Pain on the high ground as well. Pop's able to make it out to save given the vibe. It's coming back into the play. But Poppison, perfect use of the lead position will give no opportunity for Ghost to turn it back around. And in the Grim Stroke, so be killed off in front of the Roche pit. Yeah, Dream has to be a little bit careful there. The slam nearly ended up killing him. But uh, again, Roche respawns just as they win the team fight. Cuts a few buybacks, but again, if uh, Alacrity is able to grab this Aegis, he's totally happy with that kind of trade happening. Dream being one to grab the Aghanim's Blessing, and they should be able to just walk it down and end this game, considering the uh, the buybacks previously used in that uh, in the old fight. Is he going right now? It heals oh, like the Dream. Have a cute eye. Let's go pick it up. Nice. All right. Nice. He just wants to end the game real quick. And you know, Ghost doesn't have buyback, so oh, this is looking like a Radiant GG right here. Some crazy things. He's just blocking off the base here, Mizu. Not wanting anyone to even attempt to try and defend this. Come on, lads, I believe. Come on, let's go. One to ten. Oh, no, Enigma Gallic. Southeast Asia will kick off our first series with their map victory. It was, I mean, really just a staple.